AMD are finally fighting back against Intel. I'm here in San Francisco where they've just announced their new high performance Ryzen 7 processors that offer more cores and more threads for less money, a lot less money in some cases than Intel's offerings. Of course, I'll be fully testing, benchmarking and reviewing all the latest chips when I get back to the UK. But for now, here's what you need to know about Ryzen and honestly why I think we should all be pretty excited. If we're being honest, for the past few years, AMD processors have mostly been relegated to low-end laptops and budget desktop PCs. Intel has been top dog for people who want the best performance, like gamers and content creators. But I think all that's about to change. I'm genuinely excited for Ryzen, and I think it's going to bring some much, much needed competition to the market. So today, AMD unveiled three new processors within the top-end Ryzen 7 family for desktop PCs. All three are octa-core chips, that's 8 cores and 16 threads. Intel's latest i7-7700K Kaby Lake chip has just 4 cores and 8 threads for comparison. But of course, having twice as many cores doesn't mean the Ryzen chips will be twice as powerful, but what it does do is give Ryzen a big advantage in programs and games that are optimized for more cores and threads. So let's start with AMD's flagship Ryzen 1800X. 8 cores, 16 threads, a 3.6 GHz base and 4 GHz boost clock speed. AMD's calling this as their performance champ and targeting it as a competitor to the $1,000 Intel i7-6900K. The Ryzen 1800X on the other hand, which AMD claim in some benchmarks is nearly 10% faster, is just $499, that's half the price. AMD is seriously undercutting Intel at the high end here, so content creators like developers, designers and video producers might actually want to consider, for the first time in a long time, an AMD processor for the next PC build. The next level down is the Ryzen 1700X, which is being targeted at gamers and creators. It's got a slightly lower clock speed with a 3.4 GHz base and 3.8 GHz boost, but at $399, it's $100 cheaper than the top-end 1800X and is in the same price range as Intel's i7-6800K. And finally, we have the mainstream Ryzen 1700. Even though this is technically AMD's least powerful Ryzen 7 chip, it still competes with Intel's latest i7-7700K Kaby Lake chip, but a lower 3 GHz base and 3.7 GHz boost clock speed. The Ryzen 1700 will retail for just $329, that's $30 cheaper than the i7-7700K from Intel, and in the Cinebench R15 benchmark, AMD claim their chip is 46% faster. That's a pretty crazy result, so that's something I'll be definitely testing myself when I review the chips. For me though, the elephant in the room with AMD's new chips is with the clock speeds. The Ryzen 1700 we just talked about has a boost clock of 3.7 GHz. Intel 7700K boosts up to 4.5. That's a big difference, and having reviewed the Kaby Lake chip myself, it's easy to get it up to 4.9 or even 5 GHz. Of course, we'll have to wait and see how far we can push the new Ryzen chips, but it's certainly not going to match Kaby Lake clock for clock. So the Ryzen chips may have double the cores and double the threads, but unless the program or game you use is optimized to take advantage of the more cores, chances are that Intel will still come out on top in terms of raw performance. But even if Intel does win in terms of performance, AMD could come out on top in terms of value for money, bang for buck. All Ryzen processors are unlocked, which means you can overclock them, and they all support hyperthreading. Whereas with Intel, you need to pay extra for their i7 series to get hyperthreading, and then opt for the unlocked K model to overclock it. If you are tempted to upgrade to Ryzen, it's going to cost you more than just the price of the processor. The new 14 nanometer architecture that Ryzen's built on comes with a new AM4 motherboard socket, so whether you're already using an AMD or Intel processor, you're going to need to go out and buy a new motherboard to use these chips. Ryzen will be launching globally on March 2nd. Make sure you do subscribe though for my upcoming reviews of the chips as well as a full Kaby Lake versus Ryzen comparison. So that's all from me from San Francisco. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.